Hello, it's Scott Manley here, still in my dressing gown. Yes, because I had to get up at 5 a.m. to watch a rocket launch. And because with COVID-19 running around, everybody's being quarantined, I'm working from home, which means I can work in my pajamas. But yeah, um, obviously got up to watch SpaceX launch another Starlink mission, 60 satellites on their way to orbit. Newsflash, it was successful, but everybody was interested again because this was the this booster had been used four times previously. This would be the fifth reflight of a booster. And on Sunday they had a technical problem. They performed a perfect six, flawless countdown five, with this booster. Four, they three, lit the engines two, and when they one, throttled up zero. just prior to launch, they then shut the engines down and Lift announced off. it was an abort Disregard. on high power, which uh, ultimately turns out to be they got too much power from those engines so they took the rocket down they inspected the engines they might have done some changes not very clear on that but yeah they uh, got too much power so they rescheduled for today and the launch went off it carried the hardware up and about you know 10 seconds before main engine cut out they had an engine shut down it was accompanied by a puff of smoke, a flash of light, and this was actually visible from the ground. Uh, this video is from Red's Rhetoric, who was filming the entire thing using his P-1000. Um, so yeah, one engine failing isn't necessarily a problem if you have eight other engines to carry the load, even more so when you're late in flight and you're typically throttling down those engines. Remember, it's all about the amount of propellant you burn rather than losing that engine. So that the engine loses you thrust, it doesn't lose you propellant. So it was still able to make the target orbit. The second stage continued. And by the way, the second stage also had reused fairings as well. So that was a you know another milestone. So yeah, Starlink made it into orbit. The fairings didn't get caught. They were picked up and recovered from the ocean. The booster, after that engine failure, they decide to recover it. So presumably that meant that one of the three, one of the engines that failed wasn't one of the three that are used for the entry burn and landing. So we know that it was one of six engines around the outside and based upon the localization we can figure out, we could probably get a guess at which one it was. A lot of people are saying the engine exploded and that's quite natural because you see a flash of light and a puff of smoke. But you have to understand at high altitudes, you can't see the rocket thruster in your exhaust because it's expanding into the vacuum of space. It's only when it gets compressed that we see it bright again. And if you shut down an engine safely, it will produce a blob of low velocity exhaust gas which will impinge on those other exhausts and that could hypothetically make that flash and that puff of smoke. So just because we see this doesn't mean that it exploded. It could be a perfectly natural shutdown. It could be quite a violent shutdown. It might go a long way short of an explosion. The engines are sort of isolated from each other to make sure that in catastrophic events, they don't destroy each other. But yeah, presumably after that, they felt that they were still worth going for a landing. So the rocket, the booster flipped around and... Uh, headed in it performs its entry burn on schedule it's the the entry burn is the same length as all the others about 20 seconds but then after that we lose signal and the booster doesn't even attempt a landing burn so it's presumed that the booster was lost either during uh, re-entry it might have broken up or it might have hit the ground just without burning the engines now that says to me that something else failed Right, <laughs> obviously something else failed. So presumably one of the engines, the engines that failed wasn't one that's involved in the landing burn. Uh, but they didn't attempt a landing burn. So either they were so far off course that they didn't want to do that, that doesn't seem to make sense, uh, because they've soft landed boosters before in the middle of the ocean. Um, they might have wanted to recover. I, I think that they might have had an engine failure. That's speculation entirely and do not, you know, do not quote me as a rocket expert. I'm a person in a bedroom just talking about rockets. I, yeah, I think there might have been an engine failure in the, during the second burn. The reason I think it, there, this might have been the case is that we see a lot, a bit of a violent uh, interaction with the camera again seconds into the burn and then we see a lot more fog than usual on the lens. Now we do get fogging during the engine burns, during the entry burn, 
But this one seemed a lot more than normal and it looks like we actually see drops of liquid coming onto the lens cover. And that's what you would expect if an engine shut down and just blew out a bunch of unburned propellant. You would have a lot more liquid in there. I, that's possible. Or it might just be, you know, ice melting off the side of the rocket. But wouldn't you lose that on ascent? Uh, yeah, we're not sure, but there's certainly questions to be asked. Uh, I hope we find out more. What we did find out, by the way, during the previous Starlink launch, the booster failed to land on the barge. If you remember, it came down next to the barge and then fell over and ultimately nothing was brought back to port of note. There was some speculation as to what went wrong there, whether that was to do with the age of the booster. And it turns out that no, it's, it wasn't to do with the age of the booster. According to Elon, they uploaded bad wind data to the rocket and it missed its target because it was compensating for the wrong levels of wind. So yeah, um, some speculation, I guess, uh, in terms of reliability. Falcon 9 uh, looks, still looks like a really reliable rocket. It had a single engine failure. It continued and it's put its payload into the correct orbit. If you remember back during CRS-1 in the very early Falcon 1.0 days, they also had an engine failure and that continued to carry the primary payload, the Dragon spacecraft, into its target orbit. However, there was a secondary payload that was not able to get into its target orbit because it would have required, uh, they used extra propellant. It was, it was kind of a complicated thing. They could have released it, but they decided that they weren't allowed to do it because the primary customer stopped them. So, yeah, since then we've had some other failures which have not been engine related, unfortunately, I guess. So, you know, the Merlin engine still looks like a staggering, rela staggeringly reliable engine. The, I mean, compare it to the Atlas. Atlas had one case where the engine shut down five seconds early when it was launching a Cygnus. And the RL-10 engine in the upper stage had to make a fairly drastic maneuver to stop losing that payload. So, you know, it's not like Atlas doesn't have failures. Um, but I guess what I was going to say is that Atlas flies one engine per launch, whereas SpaceX, Merlin, they're flying nine, or actually ten because there's the upper stage. They're flying ten engines per launch. And we've seen really, really good reliability. So in terms of that data, in terms of those engine failures, I think Falcon 9 still looks like an amazing, reliable launch vehicle. And nobody should feel concerned about flying their payloads on it. But yeah, I'll, ultimately, I want to know what happened. I'm sure we'll find out more about what happened. Uh, until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Shh.